God made the first man, Adam, perfect, and he sinned. This price is death. God accepted payment in one spotless sacrifice. That perfect lamb was Jesus Christ. He died our death and gave us life. Erased the sting of death and won victory over the grave. And now the righteous mighty God with whom we have to do, the judge accepts the blood of Jesus paid for me and you. And though in sinful bodies we still live here on earth below, tempted, struggling, worn, despaired, can't tell which way to go. Our position up in heaven is perfect. Our slates are made clean at last. His blood is paid for all sins, future and past. That's why good works aren't spawned by duty, but by faith and love. Our debt's been paid, salvation made, our seat secure above. God sees the books of balance, our debt is satisfied. We cannot balance them more by penance, we have tried. We cannot pay more in account. Christ paid all that was due. We're in His debt and we praise Him alone for what alone He could do. There's power in having a receipt. Have you ever been in a department store, perhaps buying clothes, or more likely you're with your wife while she's buying clothes? <laughs> and after an hour, more like two or three hours, okay, <laughs> we march to the register with the clothes, we pay for them, and the important piece of paperwork they give us is our receipt. We take the bags off the counter and we head out the door ready to eat or do whatever else we need to do. But as we are walking out of the store and as we're about to go through the doors, there's this buzzer that goes off. And for that moment, you think it's somebody else, but it's actually you. And the buzzer is going. Now, I know that we have paid for the merchandise that I'm carrying, but the security guard doesn't know that. So he walks over, polite but firm, asks that he can have a look in our bags, and there are many. So we stay put, and he goes through our bags, but throughout the entire time that he is going through our bags, we have peace. There's no anxiety, there's no concern, there's no fear, because we know that everything that is in that bag has been purchased and paid for, and we have the receipt. And when the security guard has finished looking through the bag, with joy, we hand him the receipt. He smiles, he thanks us, and lets us go on our way. No crime committed, just a faulty machine at the door. Nobody arrested. Why? Because we had a receipt. And the receipt was the evidence that was needed to prove our innocence and to prove that everything we had was purchased. There's an important lesson. There's power in having a receipt. Now, for us as Christians, our receipt is not a mere piece of paper printed out of a department store cash register. But rather, it's best described as an empty cross and an empty tomb, which are God's receipts telling us that the debt we carried has been paid in full. Amen. And these receipts, the empty cross, the empty tomb, serves as reminders to the enemy of our soul, to the enemy of our flesh, that Christ's work on our behalf is all that is necessary to save us and redeem us. In Romans 8, 2, Paul forthrightly declares that there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. 
In fact, God will give a receipt to anyone who would be bold enough to declare him as Savior and as Lord. That no sinful charge against us will stick because we've been washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. I, we, no longer have to fall into what I call the performance trap of trying to work for a not guilty verdict. <laughs> the moment we began to trust in Christ to be our Savior and our Lord, we were declared by God to be eternally not guilty. God chose not to neglect us even when our entire lives were saturated by sin. Paul also says in Romans 5, 8, that while we're still yet sinners, Christ died for us. Instead, when we heard the gospel and we took a step of faith to trust in Christ, he then looks upon us and takes notice and declares to us to be not guilty. I ask you, what greater affirmation can we receive than that? As the Jehovah's Witnesses knocked on my door on Saturday, a mother and her teenage son. The issue I always share is this. If you had two minutes to live, could I be saved in your faith? No. Well, in fact, according to Jehovah's Witnesses, all the rooms have been filled. The 144,000 of them is done. They're just hoping for a space. Paul said... We now have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And the peace that we have in Christ is a fact. It's not a feeling that fades over time. Inside the performance trap, we're prone to feel the failure, which looks to remove the peace between God and us. When this thought takes root in our minds, we can minimize God's peace to a feeling because we no longer want to believe the fact of an empty cross and an empty tomb, but rather we need this feeling. Resting on your feeling that you're saved is anti-scripture, and it's against the heart of God. The word peace carries the idea of ending a war and bringing together those two parties who were once fighting. Because we're born in sin and because we're born into a knowledge of sin, automatically we are at war with God. And the war is universal. It's between the only true and living God who is completely perfect and holy and every human being born since the fall of man because they're born in sin. There's a battle for our soul. The spiritual state for every human outside of Christ is that we are born dead into the slavery of sin. Paul says in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But Paul told us that we who are in Christ have been justified. And one of the realities of our justification is that now we have a peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus has ended the conflict between God and those sinful human beings who have embraced him as their Lord and as their Savior. Jesus is the only person who is qualified to give us peace with God. Jesus said in John 46, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by me. According to the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, 6 to 7, it says that Christ is the Prince of Peace. The word peace also carries the implication of a relationship, a relationship with perfect harmony that cannot be disrupted. And since we know that we have been justified, and since we know that we have harmony with God through Christ, we can then allow God's peace to rule in our hearts, knowing that our relationship with him is perfectly protected. It's not on your feelings. This feeling of protection, when realized, is called the peace of God. 
There is a peace that comes from God that he wants to bestow on all of us through whatever things we go through. In John 14, 27, Jesus said this, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Your heart must not be troubled or fearful. How many of us allow our hearts to be troubled or fearful about what this world attempts to do? But my Bible says that Jesus is the Prince of Peace and his peace he has given to us. And this peace that Christ gives us is unlike any superficial and temporal peace that any person, place, possession, or position can be given to calm our restless hearts. Lisa, can you come up for me? There is this young man in America, and uh, he was graduating from university, from college. He'd come at the end of his fourth year. The graduation day had come. And there was this specific sports car that he had admired and liked for a long time. You see, his daddy was very rich. Some would say, Filthy rich. So the young man asked his father for the car for his graduation gift. That's some wild American custom. I bet your kids can't wait, Bill. Okay? (laughs) Bring an American. Okay? (laughs) You can clean it for them. (laughs) Yeah. And as graduation day approached, the young man awaited for the signs signs that his father had purchased the car. He had done his part. He had done his four years. He had graduated. He has his degree. He was waiting. Finally, on the morning of his graduation, his father calls him to his office. And his father says, Son, I am so proud of you. So very, very proud of you. His son thought, awesome. Then he handed his son a beautiful wrapped gift box. The young man is curious. He tears open that gift box and he finds this brand new, beautiful leather Bible. The boy is angry. He raises his voice in anger at his dad. And he says, Dad, with all the money you have, with all the wealth you have, this is it? A Bible. Now, it affected this boy worse than you can imagine because he stormed out of that house He left the Bible and his dad and he went on to his career, out of state, moved on. A job was waiting for him in graduation. The tragedy of this story is that years went by. This young man became very successful in business. He fulfilled the American dream. He had a beautiful home. He had a wonderful, beautiful wife and some new little babies. It was only during that time as a young father that he felt the anger subside. And he thought, I need to talk to dad. It's been too long. I need to talk to dad. And he thought, I know. I'll go back home. I'll visit with him. I haven't seen him since my outburst on graduation day. And just as he was making arrangements to go back to see his dad, he got a phone call. His dad had suddenly passed away, but had left all of his possessions to his son. When he arrived at his father's house, he was broken. There was a sense of loss. 
sadness filled his heart. Instead of being joyful, of reconnecting, there's a tragedy of not telling his dad, I love you. He began to search for his father's important papers. And as he went through his dad's office, he saw the box that still had the brand new Bible that had never been touched. His college graduation gift, just as he had left it years ago. With tears in his eyes, he opened the Bible and began to turn the pages. And as he began to look at the words in the scriptures, car keys dropped out from an envelope inside the Bible. And on the car keys was a tag with the car dealer's name. The same car dealer who had the car of his desire. And on the tag of the car keys was the date of his graduation with three words, paid in full. Jesus Christ is the Word of God. And Jesus Christ has paid in full the price to make you and I whole and complete in body, in soul, and in spirit. The keys for all that we are looking for are in our Bible. Jesus is the Word. Jesus is your Word. This life will promise you a lot of things. This world will promise you so much. But only God can deliver. Only God can deliver. There is no perfect earthly father. Every earthly father will make mistakes. I do and I have. But my job is not to be a father to take the place of the father, but rather as a father to lead all those who entrusted to me to the heavenly father. And there's only one way through the cross that's now empty and through a tomb that's now empty.